UBC as part of an ambitious project involving instructors, staff and talking squirrels, we are developing videos to help you with your writing skills. Because communicating science effectively is an incredibly important part of being a good scientist. Grammar Squirrel's chemistry teacher has been telling his students that it is very important to use the correct units when referring to numbers in their science writing. He says that getting them wrong or forgetting to use them entirely just gives the impression that the author doesn't care about his or her work. And also stresses the importance of getting them right when performing any calculations. He says that however good they think their math skills are, they should still check their calculations to make sure the final numbers make sense. Grammar Squirrel knows that she must label all the tables and figures in her lab notebook with appropriate numbers and units, so it follows that she needs to do the same thing in her writing. So it is firmly on her mind to get things right when she heads out into the field with her lab partners to study some thunderstorms. Grammar Squirrel and her team are hoping to measure the distance between bolts of lightning and the width of scorch marks left by each bolt on the ground when they have a pretty terrifying near miss. Three of the squirrels write down just how close the bolt was after some measuring. Later that night, Grammar Squirrel consults her science textbook to find the appropriate unit of measurement, before using her favourite search engine to confirm what she discovered. She then researches the other abbreviations that her friends used by referring to her textbook and Squoogle once more, before explaining why these abbreviations would have caused a pretty big problem in their reports. While the first misuse would have made people think the team were just a fraction of a second away from being struck, the second would make no sense, or mean different things to different squirrels as they each made their best guess as to what the unit abbreviation MTS stood for. Grammar Squirrel and her friends then have a flashback and realise that their teacher mentioned earlier that one of the most common mistakes is to pluralise unit abbreviations. So, for example, in the case of metres, adding the S to the abbreviation creates a completely different unit. And, in the case of kilograms, adding an S to the abbreviation creates something that makes no sense at all. There is no such unit as KGS. So, Anyone reading this could be just as entitled to picture kingly giant squid as kilograms. As they return to their work, the squirrels are writing up the width of the lightning bolt scorches they found on the ground. But there is some disagreement. Back to her textbook, Grammar Squirrel checks to see what the correct unit abbreviation is for millimetres. She then researches the other abbreviations her friends used, and once more, explains why they would have caused a big problem if they'd used these in their reports. While the first misuse would have left everyone scratching their heads, seeing as little m big M refers to the concentration of substance in a solution, the second would also be likely to cause confusion. Big M big M could mean megamolar but it would be rare to find this unit abbreviation being used. As such, Big M Big M could again mean different things to different squirrels, as they each guess what it might stand for. Grammar Squirrel and her friends then have another flashback, and realise that their teacher mentioned earlier that one of the most common mistakes is to capitalise, or fail to capitalise, certain unit abbreviations. Grammar Squirrel is still sweating that something is wrong with what seems to be the correct version, though. 
She writes a speedy email to a friend back home, asking her to proofread the troublesome line, and soon gets a response. Her friend says the article reads really well, but can't believe that she and her team managed to measure so many scorch marks. Grammar Squirrel realises that her friend has failed to notice the small gap between the numbers, and, as a result, has been left thinking that 1,112 marks were measured. There are two ways she can remove the ambiguity here. The first is to rearrange the sentence so that the two independent numbers are no longer placed next to one another. And the second is to write one of the numbers using words rather than numerals, like this. A few days later, the squirrels are back in the classroom, giving their peers a presentation of what they discovered on their recent field trip. During the course of their presentation, Grammar Squirrel mentions the mean width of scorch marks that the team calculated, as well as general information about thunderstorms that they found from the literature, such as the speed at which lightning bolts travel. At the end, their teacher gives them a deserved cheer. After all, their numbers and units were used correctly. But he makes two suggestions for further improvement. First, he says that it's a good plan to only use as many significant figures as can be measured with whichever tool you're using. Significant figures are all of the digits that give each number its precise meaning. So, an estimated measurement of 13.9 millimeters has three of these, the one, the three, and the nine. With this in mind, it would have been better for Grammar Squirrel to have recorded individual measurements to three significant figures and reported the average in the same way, rather than to five significant figures. There's no way the squirrels could have measured that finely. And secondly, he says that when using very small or very large numbers, you can often make them easier to interpret by using words. For example, Grammar Squirrel could have referred to the speed of the lightning as approximately 1 billion kilometers per hour. There is another, even more precise and scientific way of dealing with very small or very large numbers that uses an abbreviation format called scientific notation. But that's for a future lesson. So to recap, when you first start to work with numbers and units, it can be a little bit daunting to know how to incorporate them into your writing because there are so many rules to learn. As a quick checklist, make sure you use the right abbreviation for your unit of measurement, and don't pluralize this abbreviation by adding an S. Try not to put two distinct numbers next to each other, as this can confuse your readers, and only report the number of significant figures you are able to measure. If you are still in doubt as to how you should be writing any numbers or units that appear in your work, consulting a textbook or a trusted search engine should provide quick and easy answers. Alternatively, visiting our website, which is endorsed by Grammar Squirrel herself, will bring you to a more comprehensive guide, as well as to other resources that will help you with your science writing.